Welcome to another video from Alex Does DIY. Um, my name is Alex. G'day. Um, all right, today's job uh, we're going to try uh, try my hand at a little bit of tool making uh, with the new mill. Um, however, in saying that, uh, obviously I'll uh, give you the disclaimer that uh, uh, I'm far from a, a trained tool maker or machinist or, or anything like that. So if you've, if you've come to this video to try and um, learn techniques or learn how to do stuff you've come to the wrong place you, you want to go to um, Keith Fenner or Adams Booth's channel or you know someone who really knows what they're doing uh, if you want to just watch along that's fine because um, of that reason I'm not really going to do any commentary um, I'm just gonna hack away and have a go at what I've got to do and uh, see how it turns out really just uh, trying to learn the new uh, mill and get my head around all that and you know I'm fairly limited on tools and experience so the only way to overcome the experience issue anyway is to uh, give it a go um, but I do have a job to do a task to do I have to make a tool uh, for my son um, so he's an apprentice marine electrician um, and a tool that he needs for his job um, something that they do a lot is uh, they fit uh, batteries in the boat, um, large boats, multi-million dollar boats, and uh, the batteries are big and expensive. And uh, an issue they have is that uh, when they're fitting the clamps onto the battery terminals, they can be a bit tight or a bit undersized. Um, and there have been instances where, certainly not my son's case, but from what I hear, there's been instances where people at this place have uh, tried to get the battery clamp onto the terminal by whacking it with a hammer um, and uh, been a bit overzealous and end up pushing the terminal through in the uh, top of the battery into the actually into the battery which renders it completely useless and obviously these things are quite expensive um, so that he needs a tool that will spread um, the uh, terminal clamp wide enough to get it onto the battery terminal um, without doing any damage to the battery. Now you can buy these commercially um, and we went and had a look at them um, but the ones that we found uh, they're not expensive $20-$30 um, but they're kind of a hobby tool or certainly not up to standard for anyone in a commercial application um, even to the point where the, the ends are pop riveted on and these sorts of things and, and Chinese made sort of stuff that's not going to last long um, in all honesty I've had probably this will be the third or fourth attempt I've had at making these and they, they've gotten gradually better the ones I've made previously to the point where I think the last pair I made him which were basically I took um, actually, well let me show you um, so obviously just so you know what I'm talking about obviously this is a fairly standard uh, battery terminal clamp um, and the idea is that we need to come up with a tool that is going to um, spread these slightly so that they fit over the, the battery terminal um, so the design that I've come up with this here now this is my I've, you know I've designed this up in CAD um, which of course stands for cardboard approximated design. Um, so here we go. So you can see the two halves, similar to a pair of pliers, but work in the opposite direction, obviously, because they need to spread apart. So you've got uh, two handles um, that will overlap, and a pin will go through that centre piece there, so that uh, as you as you um, squeeze down, this end opens up. And so the idea then is that. Um, They'll actually go. All right, they'll actually go sort of that way. Um, I've got to get to the, the sizing right, but they'll they'll go into that gap there and around the bolt, so that as you squeeze, it will spread these apart. Um, now the ones I made in the past, obviously that's the same sort of action as uh, like a circlip remover. Um, so what I did was I took, took a circlip remover and cut the ends off and uh, end up putting miniature dowel pins in the end and then welding some fittings onto the end here and they, you know, the last pair I did lasted lasted him about a month before they eventually broke but he, he liked them. Um, so what I'm going to do is have a go at milling this up on the, on the milling machine. Um, just doing it out of mild steel. 
So I've just got some lengths of mild steel here. I think that's about uh, 30 by 50 or 30 by 40, something like that. Um, all I've done so far is just taken the scale off the outside with a, a face cutter and uh, just transferred the design onto there. I don't know if you can actually see it, but pick that up. And uh, I'm basically going to try and mill all this. <laughs> I didn't um, show you through all that milling because uh, it's a bit tedious. I'm still just figuring things out as I go along. So, and like I said at the beginning, it's certainly no instructional video um, and you're not going to learn anything from it anyway. I'm just really learning as I go along and, and making plenty of mistakes. And, uh, you know, I had a big chunk of steel to mill down and the biggest uh, end mill I've got at the moment is uh, a six millimeter end bit. So this has taken some hours of work. You know, I've learned a few things along the way, but anyway, so that's uh, roughed out really the first half of the tool. Um, still a little bit of more work and finessing to go on it. Um, this part here is obviously where the pin's going to go through. I need to round that off. I'm trying to uh, sort of come up with a solution for that, which I'll show you once I've got all that sorted. Uh, there's still a bit of meat to take off the tip at the end here. Um, so, and uh, I also want to mill out some more of the the handle there just to take the weight out. There's a little bit taken out there already. Um, and uh, of course it needs going over with a, a file or whatever to uh, deburr. But um, what I've done now, because obviously both halves are going to be the same, um, so I've just blued this with the sharpie and you probably can't pick it up but I've um, scribed around this side onto here so I get uh, as close as possible to two identical halves and um, once they're done we'll look at uh, rounding this pivot point off, putting a hole through the centre, coming up with some idea for a pin uh, and working all that out. So. Uh, I'll bring you back once I've uh, hogged all this this side out. Okay, now that I've got both sides of our new tool roughed out, um, and they are fairly roughed out, but um, still starting to feel and look like a bit of a tool. Um, the next stage on the other side, I've done one already. Uh, the next stage is to now uh, uh, turn a, a curve on this piece, and you see I've done this one already. Just turn this curve here because um, obviously that's our pivot pivot point. So what I've got here is just a bit of scrap mild steel um, clo uh, toe clamp down to the table here with a 5mm hole. Um, they've drilled a 5mm hole through the pivot point. I'm just popping a 5mm screw through there. Pop that into the hole. That gives us a, you can see there, that gives us a pivot point to turn. And then uh, I can slowly wind in the uh, Y axis and bring it in closer and closer to the cutter. And 
and um, get that done. So I've already set a zero on the, the y-axis to limit how far in I come so that it should match the other side. Um, now I'm turning this by hand I will tell you one thing. I'm using a carbide burr, um, rotary burr um, to do this. Don't use an end mill. Um, if you use an end mill or a normal milling cutter it will bite into this part and no matter how hard you've got hold of this by hand it will rip, you, rip it out of your hand. Okay, now. Uh, I know that through experience because that's what I tried the first time and it took some thinking before I thought to come up with uh, trying it with a rotary burr. Um, obviously the teeth are a lot smaller and it doesn't bite in like uh, a milling cutter would. So anyway, I'll turn it on and you can have a look and see how this works. So there we go. That comes out alright I reckon. And uh, to see how well it matches the other one, let's have a look. Alright, it's not too bad. Have a little bit of finishing off to do, but uh, I think that's going to work. Alright, on to the next job. So as it turns out I had a bit of a problem with the camera there and uh, we lost all the uh, footage from that last point but the tool's now finished um, and it seems to be working so this is how it turned out then. There we go. Uh, so the footage that you didn't see on camera was basically me turning a pin here on the lathe um, and it's a the way I did it, it's on this through on this side. It's a it's a press fit onto this side, and then more of a slip fit onto this side, um, so that it rotates on this side but stays fixed on this side, and it's smaller on this side where it's a press fit compared to the slip fit on this side, so that it comes together and it has it's worked. There's a little bit of play in it, but uh, just enough to be able to obviously where I operate with. Uh, one hand, but I think they turned out not bad for my first uh, my first project on the uh, milling machine, and um, yeah, I think they look all right. There we go. Um, and so the way they work, obviously, so you've got a battery terminal clamp here, so you can imagine if uh, the hole here is just a little bit tight to go on to. Um, the the battery terminal even though you've got the bolt loose so um, what you do with these you'll see there's a a um, there we go see there's a slot um, milled into there and um, so you, you close you, you close the end by opening up the handles and then um, they go slide onto there Like so, you can see slid onto there like that. I'll show you from that view, that'll give you a good view. And then as you squeeze, 
what happens is it opens up the clamp and then you can put it on the battery terminal and then release there you go and it stayed open too so yeah they work so hopefully the boy likes them and uh, gets some use out of them and um, I hope you enjoyed uh, the video like I said at the beginning it wasn't really intended to be any sort of milling or tool making instructional video um, hey, yeah, I'm the last person you should be um, coming to for that sort of thing there's plenty of really experienced guys out there OzTool and uh, a few others that I follow I'm sure you know who they are um, but yeah I'm quite pleased with those for a first attempt to, to uh, at the uh, milling, new milling machine and uh, it's always a nice thought to think that you've, uh, you've taken what was a raw chunk of steel and turned them into a usable tool I'm pretty happy with those. Alright, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.